experts have voiced skepticism about a so-called standby counter-terrorism force announced Sunday by West African bloc ECOWAS. The critics say, despite the comments from Nigeria's president suggesting the force is ready for deployment, ECOWAS has not provided any details about its size, base, funding or mode of operation. Timothy Obiezu reports from Abuja. Nigerian President and ECOWAS Chair Bola Tinubu announced what he called the, quote, activation, end quote, of a standby force on counterterrorism while addressing African leaders during an African Union meeting in Ghana on Sunday. The force, first proposed in August 2023 after a coup in Niger, is projected to consist of military, police and civilian components and be jointly sponsored by ECOWAS members. However, ECOWAS members have yet to decide which countries will contribute the personnel and from where they will operate. Tinubu told leaders at Sunday's summit that ECOWAS is exploring options for funding the force. His comments came two weeks after three of the bloc's former members, Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger, announced a confederation signaling their exit from ECOWAS was permanent. All three countries withdrew from ECOWAS after being suspended from the bloc following military takeovers of their government. Security analyst Senator Iribu says creating a joint ECOWAS force to fight terrorism is a good idea, but questions the regional bloc's readiness. With uh, Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso pulling up, forming out their, form their own, it, it tends to dilute whatever arrangement because these three countries are actually the epicenter of uh, terrorism we are talking about. This uh, ECOWAS um, standby force on counter-terrorism, where is it going to operate? Is it in Nigeria? Nigeria already has its own arrangement. ECOWAS said it will continue to dialogue with the military leaders of Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso and plans to convene a special summit on the future of the bloc. In April, ECOWAS held a counter-terrorism summit in Abuja to strategize on combating terrorism affecting its remaining member states. Sub-Saharan Africa has become an epicenter of terrorism, accounting for more than half of the global terror-related deaths, according to the 2023 Global Terrorism Index report. Burkina Faso suffered the highest number of deaths, with Mali, Nigeria and Niger not far behind. Ahmed Buhari is a political affairs analyst. He is skeptical about the success of the ECOWAS force amid uncertainty and instability within the region. I do not see anything new with what ECOWAS is um, reiterating. Um, this is what we've been hearing for the last 15 years or so. Um, it's been in the conversation. The terror hasn't declined. As a matter of fact, it seems like the terrorists are uh, seemingly gaining ground and becoming more daring. Irebu says ECOWAS countries should focus more on improved governance if they want to address the cause of terrorism. More than setting up a brigade or a uh, force to, for, on counter-terrorism, other aspects of uh, non-kinetic measures are what is more needed. But it is check that the root cause of these are non-kinetic issues like human security aspect, issue of good governance, issue of development, issue of inclusiveness, issue of um, sound electoral process. And these are issues that uh, once it's in place, and um, even terrorists will find it hard to even thrive in such environment. It's not clear when ECOWAS will hold the summit on its three former member states. Analysts say the chances of successful dialogue among the West African states are slim, but it is not impossible. Timothy Obiezu, VOA News. The leader of the opposition, Joel Senyonyi, has criticized government over the arrest of three members of parliament belonging to the National Unity Platform Party. Honorable Hassan Kirumira. Katikamo County South, Honorable Charles Tewandeke, Bale County, and Honorable Francis Izaki, Mitiana Municipality, together with several members of the NUP party, were arrested on Monday, 22nd July 2024. They were detained on allegations of holding an unlawful assembly. 
Senyonyi who raised the matter during the plenary sitting on Tuesday, 23rd July 2024, chaired by Deputy Speaker Thomas Tayewa said that the arrest was unwarranted since the MPs were on their way to the NUP party headquarters in Makere Kavure to attend a weekly press conference. It would be a good thing for government to help us understand the seeming double standards because several other political entities keep operating but for some it does not get to happen. Prime Minister Robina Nabanja explained that the MPs were arrested in accordance with Articles 23 and 4b of the Constitution, protection of personal liberty and restraint upon reasonable suspicion, respectively. Government is charged with the responsibility to take care of security of persons and their property. It is under that that some of our colleagues are under detention. They will go through the legal process and if found innocent, they will be released, Nabanja said. Honorable Gorethi Namuga, NUP Maogola County South, however, said that the heavy deployment at the NUP party headquarters should have been used to keep peace to allow the press conference to go on. Attorney General Kiro Wachiwanuka guided that commenting on matters before court is, sub is a disservice to the suspects. Whereas the opposition may look at everything with a suspicion, let us hold the police accountable but allow them to work, he said.